All right, so once you've got it out of the box, this is basically what you'll have in front of you. This is a panel mount style drive, so it's got standoffs on both the top and the bottom. Over here on the right hand side, you've got your local disconnect, your app motor disconnect. This disconnects your line power. It's a lockout tagout style design, so it has a little clasp there at the bottom where you can insert a lock. Continuing further down, you've got your line power comes in as well as line power going out. It's a pigtail design, so you can power another device down the line without having a T. Now behind this cover you've got the connections for the incoming line as well as fuses for the incoming line. Now this drive is group installation listed so we'll go ahead and pull that cover off and show you. The cover is tethered which is real nice. Behind the cover you've got the uh, sticker there which shows you what's behind there. You've got your line fuses as well as the fuses for your EM brake contactor. There's also DC bus test points behind this cover that you can access to get DC bus voltage measurements. Now I'll pull that cover off, you can go ahead and see the fuses for the incoming line, the fuses for the EM brake, as well as your line connections. Three phase line connections as well as your ground. Now this drive is IP66 washed down rated, so you've got that angled heat sink there in the middle where dirt and debris can just wash right out of it. Continuing further on, you've got your safety I.O. So you've got two safety inputs as well as one safety output. Now this drive can do network safety or hardwired safety. Below that you've got your encoder connection there. It'll do incremental encoders as well as absolute encoders. Okay, continuing further down, you've got the motor connector there at the bottom. Your motor would connect there. Behind this cover here in the middle, you've got your dip switches as well as rotary switches for your IP address. Now you can set it for a 192.168.1 IP address by setting those three rotary switches on the right hand side which will set the last octet. It's also got fuses for a built in control power supply. There's a switch there in the middle for the voltage for the encoder. You could do 12 volt or 5 volt encoders. Continuing further on you've got some status indicators for your communications. You've got a clear fault button there in the middle. You've also got a drive status indicator there. Continuing further up, you've got your local auto mode and your function mode. Now your local auto mode, you can jog it right there from the keypad. Function mode, on the other hand, those buttons there act as digital inputs that can be read back from a Logix processor. Continuing further on, you've got your standard I.O. You've got four inputs as well as two out. You've got four dedicated inputs as well as one that can be configured for input or output. So that'll give you a total of four inputs and two outputs or you could do six inputs. Now continuing further down you've got your Ethernet ports there at the bottom A1 and A2 those are your gigabit Ethernet ports it's a dual port design. Now this particular drive that we're looking at is an early production model where it's got a uh, 100 meg Ethernet port B1 so your drive wouldn't have that. Continuing further down you've got your brake resistor connection there at the bottom. Now our drive came with the built-in brake transistor. We would connect our brake resistor to that plug there at the bottom. They make two versions of the brake resistor. There's a light duty version that would connect right onto the side of the drive and then there's the standard duty which you could mount anywhere but the connection would still be at the bottom of the drive there. Now continuing further on you've got the our drive's got the built-in power supply, but if it didn't, you'd have two more terminals here for your aux power in. Further down, going back to that motor cable connection there at the bottom. Now, since our drive's got the built-in EM brake that's incorporated into this motor cable, so it's a 7-pin cable instead of a 5-pin cable. So that's an overall view of the product. In our next video, we'll go over the installation of this.